Yeah, we're live. It says we're live. All right. Hello, hello. It's uh, four o'clock Pacific, five o'clock, no, six o'clock Central here in Costa Rica, seven o'clock on the East Coast, midnight in Dublin, 1 a.m. in London and most of Europe, 8.30 and 9.30 a.m. Wednesday morning in Australia. I think it's 11.30 a.m. Wednesday morning in New Zealand, and it's Facebook Live. Hello, everyone. Great to be with you. Our guest is, is not on screen yet, so there's some technical difficulties, and my team will be working in the background. So here we are. Here we are. And Gio, unfortunately, went down about 10 minutes ago. We just, we couldn't keep his eyes open any longer. You know, there was, um, he had... Um, He's still recovering from his first birthday party ever, and uh, and then his dad's birthday the next day, and so uh, he went down. But uh, uh, or we would have certainly had him here. Um, well, you know, and I'm trying to bring up Facebook on my phone so I can do shout shout outs to people, and I hit the logo and it keeps just popping back to the logo, so I have no idea what's going on. Give me a few minutes and I'll figure it out. And I see that our guest is here. Uh, Dan, you have to turn on your camera. And uh, uh, he'll be here shortly, but um, uh, I'll wait for him to come on before I introduce him. Uh, but I'll tell you a little about how I met Dan while we're waiting for the technical stuff to work out. Um, you're in for a treat tonight. You know, we've had a lot of great guests on, uh, but. This is a different type of guest. This is a guest who lives and breathes and every cell of his body oozes the concepts we're gonna be talking about. There you are. Hey, Dan. Having a little technical uh, issue here. Good to see you, Tom. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you too. And uh, uh, nice nice to see we got it worked out. Okay. So I was, I was just starting to talk about how we met and uh, uh, I used to, when, when I moved to Southern California, the town is Encinitas, and I would go to this surf shop, uh, this coffee shop where surfers hang out, kind of a funky coffee shop, you know, there's really nice coffee shops in town and uh, upscale and there's a Starbucks, but this one is funky. And, you know, just to kind of get the feel of, uh, of the area and good coffee and um, met some nice people, and I'd hear this guy talking who was talking nutritional concepts. And I said, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. And so I asked him one day, he was talking about his product, and we got to talking, and he gave me some of his product to take uh, uh, called Sunhorse Energy. And it, at the time, it was in a gallon container. You know, you just drink a little bit of it. And I noticed that it enhanced my performance on a bicycle. Now I've done 18 triathlons and a whole lot of hundred mile bike rides and a couple longer rides. We did a five day ride um, uh, from Portland, Maine, no, from Montreal to Portland, Maine. And uh, uh, it was an AIDS ride to raise funds for AIDS. Uh, so I've done some long rides and I'm, I'm okay on a bicycle. I, I know what I'm doing. But when I drank the Sunhorse Energy product, my performance increased to the point to where I said, that's not possible. Because I wear a pulse monitor when I'm riding my bicycle and I always stay in my zone, but I was going so much faster in my zone. And I said, well, this is interesting. So I tried it the next day and the same thing happened. And uh, uh, then I got a call from my sister that, um, it was time to disconnect our mother from life support, that she had been fading. Uh, she had severe sepsis and she had been in a coma for eight days and the hospice said she wasn't going to wake up. And so I was flying home to Detroit from California to disconnect my mother, you know, and um, I packed a couple of suits and shoes because I was going to be there for a while to deal with all of the arrangements and I brought my sun horse with me because I was going to be there for a while. So I hoped I'd have a chance to exercise. And when I got home, I arrived at my sister's home at two in the morning. The flight was late getting in and everyone's asleep. 
But I went into the guest room where my mother was in a hospital bed, all hooked up to machines. And she was in a fetal position with her eyes half open. And she didn't recognize, didn't blink or anything. I gave her a kiss and I said, I'm here, mom, I'm here. And there was no recognition, nothing. And, and then I thought, why not? Why not? So I gave her some sun horse energy. I tilted her head and I gave her some sun horse energy. Um, the product was called ultimate energy and it's still called ultimate energy. And uh, I set my alarm for two hours later because she might die during the night, you know, so why not? Let's see if it helps. I don't know. And I gave her another serving. And then in the morning when we got up, my sister and I had to go to a meeting. I gave her a third serving. So I really dosed her up. And hospice comes every day to sit with our mother and they bathe her and they play Frank Sinatra music. My mother loved Frank Sinatra. And we came home a few hours later. There's our mother in a wheelchair. And she, ha, 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 hi, ta, 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 Tom. She was back. She was out of eight day coma. And I did what every doctor does in a situation like that. I said, give her two ounces three times a day. You know, I just made it out of it. We were just shocked. But our mother lived another six weeks in no pain, but just the body worn out. And she was wheeled to the kitchen table every day uh, for meals. And um, she would interact on occasion, but she was conscious and she was with us, not in a coma in a bed for six weeks. That's amazing. And I came back to Encinitas and I looked for Dan and I said, Dan. And he said, hey doc. And I said, Dan, I'm in. He said, in, in for what? And I told him what happened and both of our jaws just dropped. And, uh, but that started the, the direction of Sun Horse is more than an energy drink. And it's been now uh, almost nine years, almost nine years. And here we are today and you're gonna hear from the horse's mouth. <laughs> oh, that's a pun, I guess. I guess that's a pun <laughs> about, about Sun Horse. And um, I'm going to read to you Dan's bio. Uh, just to make sure I get it right. I mean, I, I know this guy really well, and I'm proud to call him my good friend for many years now. And uh, uh, but to um, to talk about um, um, this product, I'd like you to know a little about Dan. And this is what Dan says about himself. Inspired by my Hungarian mother, who was a respected herbalist, I started my career in herbalism 40 plus years ago with a vision of bringing real benefits to the most people possible. In Encinitas, California, I worked with several naturopathic doctors providing special herbal formulas for the various conditions they encounter in their practice. This experience has enabled me to continue refining my formulas to be the most efficacious for the widest range of people. My main goal is helping people to not just survive, but adapt and thrive and therefore unlock their true potential, Dan Moriarty. So um, this is Dan and uh, my good friend. So Dan, with that, welcome, R really glad you're here. Thank you, Tom, I really, can you hear me okay? Is the yes. sound good? Okay, yes. um, we've got a couple new pieces of uh, digital equipment here, so I'm, I'm struggling with it. So I hope it sounds good on your end. And I really appreciate the opportunity that um, that we have here in the in the time of COVID. You know, with this uh, Zoom thing, everybody should be an expert by now. But uh, me, I'm I'm a bit of a lab rat. You can kind of see where we're doing this is uh, you know in the ante room of our of our facility here. So um, once again, I do uh, want to thank everybody who's tuned in. I have no idea how many people are hearing this, but if it's more than one, I'm really happy because you know that's I feel I'm talking to you know, each individual as, as, it, as the need arises here. So it's really, it is a privilege I, I appreciate greatly, Tom. And, you know, when I hear that story about um, what happened with your mother, I get goosebumps. I still get goosebumps after all these years because that's so, you know, I mean, when you tell that to somebody that hasn't experienced something like that, 
you know, I, I think people somehow, you know, it just sounds incredible, you know, you, like you almost can't believe it. But when you think of the physiological things that were happening there, you know, she was in a coma. Let's think about that. So the body and the brain, you know, with a lack of energy, and when I say energy, let's, 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 let's qualify that. It's cellular energy. So our brain cells, our body cells, our muscles, every single cell in our body has to create energy and trans, transfer ubiquinol to ubiquinone and make enough energy to be a viable cell and, and, and function. So when you gave her the ultimate energy, which is exactly what we still call it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's, yes, we can. that's yeah. the name. Anyway, so the name hasn't changed. And it was really funny because when I went to the FDA with my formula originally, um, and I said, listen, this stuff really does create a situation where the cells are creating more energy. They said, well, um, Moriarty, um, that's true, but we have, we regretfully, we have to tell you that this does not qualify as an energy drink. And I'm like, it's, it's the only energy drink as far as I know. And they said, well, that's the problem. They said an energy drink by definition is a drink that can contain sugar or a sweetener and usually anhydrous caffeine. That's an energy drink. So yours is something else. So what would you like it to be? I said, well, if it can't be an energy drink, I guess it's just going to have to be an energy supplement. They go, we can do that. They said, but energy drink, no. Rockstar, Red Bull, these are energy drinks. They have guaranine, taurine, other things. There's a formulator, you know, we all look at ingredients. But, and caffeine, caffeine. Now, caffeine is not energy. Caffeine is a stimulant. That's the difference. So when people are taking these so-called energy things, they're actually, what they're doing is they're stimulating their, their own existing energy supplies and robbing Peter to pay Paul. Whereas with, if, with something like this, which is based on adaptogenic technology, you're actually encouraging your body cells to make more actual energy, more actual cycle and the energy cycle is being stimulated. And if you exchange this, this, this magical component, which is really a proton jumping back and forth. We run on just an exchange of a proton. So these herbs have been shown for over 80 years to do this. They actually increase cellular energy. So if you increase cellular energy, it's like going to the bank and checking it at the ATM and seeing your balance. And you're supposed to have $8,000 in there, but all of a sudden you look at the little slip that pops out and you have $800,000 in there. And you're like, what? <laughs> right, that's a dream oh, 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 you, know, you know how much money, you know how much money you're supposed to have. Now I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not recommending larceny in any way, but a lot of people, when they got that $800,000 sticker coming out of there, they might go shopping, you know? And, and maybe that's not the best analogy. But our bodies, when it gets the additional energy that it didn't have before, because the cells are actually exchanging ubiquinol to ubiquinone back and forth much more. So if you have increased that exchange by 10%, you now have exchanged, you actually have 10% more energy to deal with. Now your body knows what to do with that. Now, when you gave that drink to your mother, she was all shut down, as you mentioned. She was in the end stage where we, you know, we don't want to talk about it, but that's what happens to our bodies when they shut down. And so all of a sudden, those cells start creating more ubiquinol and ubiquinone, that exchange, that Krebs cycle was increased. Then her brain comes back online and she looks at you, her son, and recognition happens. And, and you you just explained what happened there. And I'm just explaining the backstory. So my, my whole career, you mentioned earlier, it started with my mother. And, and honestly, I've always just strived to be somebody that, my mom's passed away, by the way, but um, due to an accident. But unfortunately, I, I've always strived to be the type of herbalist that my mother would be proud of to do the real thing, to do what really helps people and not, not play games, 
to make it sure that everything works. Well, Dan, let's let's talk about that. I mean, that's that's profound what you just said. And uh, uh, as people hear more from you, they'll know that you're not just whistling Dixie, that you really mean what you say, that you want to make sure what you're doing, your mother would be very proud of. So this concept for most people, they don't know an herb to a vitamin to a mineral. And this thing about adaptogenic herbs. Now, we know that for all the herbs out there, for about every 4,000 herbs, there's one that's an adaptogen, that they're pretty rare. They're pretty yeah, rare. So can, can you just give us a little background first on what adaptogens are? But, but by the way, for everyone that's here, what you're going to learn is what you need to do to protect yourself from this current threat that's out there, this, this current threat of uh, uh, catching a, uh, a viral bug. So that's one of the things we're going to talk about tonight. But before we do, I want the background so that people understand what is an adaptogen. OK, <clears throat> so let's talk about that. This term is becoming a little more accepted and recognized in Western you know, places like America and in and, and other places now. But we have to go back to the beginning. And this research into herbs that could elicit a very important factor started before the Second World War in Russia. Okay, not our, not exactly our trading partners most of the time. So we weren't really aware of what was going on over there. But the Russians, they they the winds of war were sweeping across Europe. My mom was Hungarian. Her family was in Budapest, Hungary, and you know they, they were very aware that things were not going well in with Germany and Russia. So the Russians were were kind of gearing up and mentally preparing themselves for what seemed to be inevitable. You know, this the world at war was was just moving forwards as quickly. And so um, Nikolai Lazarov was commissioned by the Russian government to find some substances, some, some plant substances endemic to Russia that could help the Russian people in times of extreme stress and, and deprivation, which is what war really is. It's incredible deprivation and, and death. But they wanted to be able to help their workers, their factory workers, their soldiers, and things like that. So this was a government program to search the, the plant world in the northern world. Now, I remind you, um, ginseng is an adaptogen, which everybody's heard of ginseng, I'm sure. Ginseng is an adaptogen. It's a tonic herb, but beyond being a tonic herb, it's an adaptogen. So when Nikolai Lazarov and, and his uh, associate, Israel Breckman, when they started searching with, with payroll from the, from the Russian government, they came across some amazing plants in Russia that could do what ginseng did and even do it better in some cases. So what they did was they had to define the, 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 the definition of what are we looking for? What does ginseng really do? And what are we looking for? So they defined what ginseng did because they understood that was controlled by Korea and, and in some places, China, not exactly friendly buddies with them. So they couldn't, act, they couldn't count on getting ginseng. So what they did was they looked in their own country, but what, what the ginseng did as an adaptogen and what all adaptogens do is I'll give you the three kind of a triumvite definition. Adaptogens work at the cellular level. In other words, they actually work on the cells themselves. So if you could take cells of any, any type of cells, any, any organ cells, lung cells, tissue cells, skin cells, you could put them in a situation where they're in a solution and take hydrogen peroxide, which is a strong oxidizer, and you were to drip hydrogen peroxide into the solution with these living cells in a, in a solution, and you drop in the hydrogen peroxide. So you're raising the oxidative stress, and you count the drops, one, two, three, keep counting the drops of, of, of hydrogen peroxide until the cells die. So let's say it took 30 drops of hydrogen peroxide in, in a small container to kill the cells in there. So you notate that. Now you take those same type of cells, 
you put them in the same solution, only this time you add a, a solution, a water extraction of your plant, in this case, ginseng. So now the, the cells have their, their living uh, matrix, the, the solution with ginseng. Now you start dripping in the, the hydrogen peroxide. One, two, three, four, five. When you hit 30, 35, 40, the cells are still alive. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. They're like, oh my God, what's going on here? They get to 100, they get to 150. They get to 200 drops. 200 drops before the cells start to die. Wow. So these are the cells. And in one case, they died at 30 drops, oxidation, oxidative stress. With the, just the addition of ginseng, the cells can stand incredible amounts of oxidative stress. So this shells up, this was a scientific experiment. They said, okay, so this stuff works at the cellular level and it helps the cells resist stress. In this case, oxidative stress. So they also tried other types of stressors and they found out that it was consistent that adaptogens work at the cellular level. They're non-toxic to the cells. They don't kill the cells even at very high concentrations. So they're not toxic and it help the cells adjust to stresses. And what's even more important when you put the ginseng into an organism like a human or an animal, they would take a mouse and they would put it in water and they just make it swim until it died, until it drowned it. And they would time it. This mouse can swim for like 45 minutes in just a container until it, it drowns. So now they give it ginseng and they put it in there and this mouse is swimming around for an hour and a half. They're like, holy mackerel. And they just got, they actually felt sorry for the little dude. So they took him out of the water. They go, okay, look, an hour and a half, this is, we've solved the problem with the house. So we have one living mouse lab rat that was able to swim for an enormous amount of time. So as an organism, it helps us expand what we can do. Once again, with somebody like your mother, it was very apparent. End stage, she comes back for six weeks of life. My God, that's a miracle. It really is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. So now, now, for everyone out there, this is what it's like when Dan Moriarty starts talking is that there's a story and, but it's an accurate story. And by the end of it, you've got an understanding of the benefit or the point that he's making. So I'm saying this because so many people, they want to know right now, come on, I don't, I don't have time for all this, you know, and, but in, in our Facebook group, people know, just sit tight, hang in there. There's a reason for this. And so you're hearing the background as to where the development of adaptogens came from. And that's just fabulous to understand because that's what it does in your body, that these adaptogens will do that. And different adaptogens have a focus or different formulas will have a focus on different areas. For example, Dan, and, uh, and we, we talked about the, and there's so many variations we went through, but Dan took ultimate energy and added a couple of herbs for men and then ultimate energy and added a couple of herbs for women. So Dan, can, can you talk about the other two products that came off of the master ultimate energy? Well, yes. I mean, I don't want to digress too much, but yes, I will. Okay. Ultimate energy, first of all, it's right here. Okay. And let me see if I have... Um, now, while Dan is checking for that, let me acknowledge that his video is catching. Give me one second here. There, I have the ultimate energy, but I want to, if you'll just pardon me for a second, I'll go grab the other product. Sure, it's in the sure other Dan. Go yeah. ahead. And while he's doing that, I just want to acknowledge for everyone that, yes, I know his video is catching, but, you know, he's coming back and I'm grateful it keeps coming back. So we'll just um, uh, keep him uh, here and hopefully he won't be disconnected. Uh, and I, there's a couple of questions. Amal asks, uh, uh, is it the same product for both men and women? Ultimate energy is for everyone. Uh, children above three, uh, uh, men, women, uh, it's, the, it's the general tonic. And then Dan's about to show us 
the versions of Ultimate Energy plus a couple of herbs for women, Ultimate Energy plus a couple of herbs for men, and then we're going to go into supporting your immune system. Uh, okay. So, okay, here we go. So, um, without, you know, I know the time is precious and you're probably subtly reminding me not to talk about this too much, even though I will have to say, and for our listeners too, um, I decided to devote my life to building the best adaptogenic formulas. And I, I decided this many, many years ago under my uh, advice and, and encouragement. And so that's what I did because she said, in order for me to be successful in what I do, she really encouraged me to be either the best or the only. That's kind of Hungarian for being the best because she basically was saying, you know, you have to be the best or the only, you can't be the only, there's always gonna be another herbalist, so you have to be the best. So anyway, so I spent 40 years to learn the best way to put these herbs together, knowing that it's not just a laundry list of herbs. Watching my mother work, she was so meticulous on how she gathered, prepared, and blended and made her formulas. That was, it was like, like to her. So um, it, it, it was it's something I still think of every day when I work. So here's ultimate energy. And it has jogulin, Himalayan goji, acai, Peruvian maca, American ginseng, shisandra, Asian licorice, rhodiola, rosea, astragalus, reishi, um, catuaba, which is urethroxylum, vasinifolium, guarana, polinia cupana, ashwagandha, all in this formula. And this basically every herb is in the correct relationship to the other herbs, as every cook knows. You don't just throw equal amounts of everything in a pot and call that, but have everything in proper ratio to bring out the taste. One And when you put it in, in what order, uh, what heat temperature range, what, what the preparation was before you combine them with the other herbs, these are all come into play when you make a formula. So this is the central, I'll try to put this here, central uh, formula. Then on this side, you have the Thrivagen, which is the women's side. And then on this side, you have the mojo, which is the men's side. So what, what adaptogens do in this formula is they get the cells ready for beneficial change. All of our cells are just like, wow, what am I going to do with all the energy and fun stuff? So by putting the tip of the spear, the target molecule, so to speak, when we go to the mojo for the men, uh, let's just do the women first. It's more important. Okay, let's just, when we go to the women's side first, so we have the same herbs that are in the adaptogenic ultimate energy. In addition, we have shatavri, which is a famous Ayurvedic herb. It, it basically means she with a hundred husbands. In other words, in, in Sanskrit, Indian ancient language, that a woman would actually be able to be subtle that she could figuratively, not realistically, but figuratively, she could have a hundred husbands. Shatavri was that powerful in their world. Okay, so Shatavri, and then we have Angelica Archangelica, which is an amazing herb. It, it just is like, it's such a balancing, nourishing herb for women's uh, reproductive systems at any age. Like a woman's reproductive organs and, and hormonal uh, entourage is their most powerful asset if it's working correctly. If it's working incorrectly, well, we don't know what happens if it's working. It's not good for her and it's not good for anybody around her. It's just, it's just a problem. Okay, so we need to balance that. Okay, and that, that Angelica, Eric Angelica, and then we have the Avitus Agnus Castus, which is called chase tree berry. It's another one, really famous one for, for women. And so these are the women's herbs that are kind of like the projectile that the, that the adaptogens are propelling into the cells. And it goes right to where it go, is supposed to go, which is women's reproductive organs. And it basically balances their hormones throughout their entire life from puberty to perimenopausal and postmenopausal. So Dan, it's really an amazing, this, this formula is my mom's formula in a nutshell. Right. Hey, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a comment here. Sure. That in 2014, 
we took 15 perimenopausal women and they filled out some questionnaires for me and then we gave them Thrivagen for three months and every single woman benefited from it. Those, and I'm not exaggerating, two of them were changing the sheets at night because they were sweating so much. And when they took Thrivagen after four, six weeks, I don't remember the time frame, they weren't sweating at night. Their, their sleeping garments weren't so wet and were, were not wet anymore. And, exactly. And that's, that's not a pleasant uh, situation for women. So it, it really helped them. I remember that study, Tom. That was really impressive. And my mom, what her specialty was women's problems. That's what her, I never paid much attention that when I was young, you know, I mean, come on, I mean, young guy in California, surfer. I mean, you know, my mom was a specialist with women's problems. I didn't want to know about that. So unfortunately, I didn't listen as good as I should have about that. But later on in life, as I, came an herbalist and I was living in this. I, man, I regretted not paying attention to her so much. You can't even believe it. I was trying to channel what I wasn't paying attention to, but I knew I'd seen it. I knew it was there rolling around the back of my head somewhere, but man, I did not, you know, the regret was there and it just propelled me to just like, I'm going to figure this out. And when I figured out Thrivagen eventually, to where it worked like my mom's formula with women told me, many, many women, hundreds of women told me that this formula was doing what I knew my mom's formula did. Let me tell you, I, re I realized what a good herbalist my mother was. And I realized how hard to do this. And let me tell you, that, that was a big moment. And she was no longer with us at that time. And I, I'm telling you, if she was here, she would be smiling because that's, that's how impressed I was with what she had done. And then going to the other side of the spectrum, you know, we have the men's side. Okay, so now we're much more simple creatures. Don't you agree, Tom? Yes, we, we are. We really are. You know, I mean, you don't have a lot of hormones to deal with. You know, it's just got testosterone, you got a little estrogen. You know, whether it's dihydrotestosterone or free testosterone, we could kind of start playing with that a little bit. But women, they have, they're 12 times complicated than we are easily so but the men still need help because you know there's a lot of performance issues and, and a lot of a lot of things that start to break down as you get a little bit past middle age men just don't feel like they did when they were 18 or 20 anymore and why is that that shouldn't be the case everything should work really well and so i said look i i need to solve this problem too so i once again i went to the technology that is adaptogenic technology. We call it global resonance formulation, uh, if anybody cares to know about that, but that's our formulation methodology. And so we go to that, it's got those adaptogens, their primary and secondary adaptogens throughout the formula. And then in addition to the adaptogens, the point of the spear or the, the payload, if you will, to our cells, once again, we get down into this and it is catuaba, which is an amazing South American herb that is just unbelievable and has such a powerful effect on men's um, kidney function, urinary tract, and all these other elements that are very, very, very key to men's health. The catuaba, and then the ashwagandha, that also does a very good thing. The tribulus, which is this Bulgarian tribulus, which is called tristus. That's a... Um, a spiky, thorny little creature that uh, it's a little, it's almost like a burr that will punch a hole right through a bike tire. It's very powerful. And um, that is, uh, this Bulgarian version of it is the most powerful tribulus in the world. They've done the best studies comes from this. We use this in the formula. And epimidium, which has been called horny goat weed because it makes goats well, it makes goats want to have baby goats or make more baby goats. So they people that were herding their goats noticed when the goats ate particular stuff called idiom that all the goats started, you know, copulating and doing things that goats do. And next thing you know, they have more goats. So they're like, hey, this is great for the goats. And then some really wise guy, you know, like a thousand years ago said, hey, what if I eat this stuff? So he started, that's how most things come about, watching the animals 
So people started eating the stuff and lo and behold, same thing. So there you have the epimidium. And so those are the three men's herbs. So once again, you wind up with a men's side, a women's side, and then in the middle, you have the pure adaptogenic ultimate energy. And the reason there's three instead of just two, because when you take Mojo for like three or four months, what I recommend is to stop taking Mojo for a month and then switch to ultimate energy because that changes the formula to your cells just slightly. It's like going to the gym and lifting the same amount of weight in the same way on the same machines all the time. What will happen is your body will not develop much past a certain plateau. But when you change up the stresses and you do cross training in every different way at the gym, you build up even better. So this, you come from the mojo and go to the ultimate energy. Now the women, same thing. They're, they're taking Thrivagen. Now women are gonna love this part because women, when they wanna change it up, they can go to the ultimate energy, just like the men do. But guess what women, they can also go to the mojo. And why is that? Well, because women often have no testosterone in their system. And they're wondering why they feel flat, why they don't have any energy, why they don't have any libido, why they're not interested in, in being amorous like they were when they were in their 20s and 30s. What's going on? Well, because if you check, if you did a blood sample on them and you check their hormone, uh, you would find that their testosterone was at zero. So now when they switch to either ultimate energy or the mojo, they're going to have quite a difference. And many women, we we have them buy mojo for themselves. So uh, that's kind of the basis. These are our core products. These three products are core to the whole sun horse system. And we have many other products we can talk about, but these definitely are ones we would recommend. Well, the place where I thank you, thank you, Dan. The place that I wanted to start with is what are adaptogens, and people now have an understanding of that, and the core products that we began with. And there have been a number of questions that have come in. I think you've answered most of them already uh, in terms of uh, do we need to take breaks from adaptogens, and are they best for regular daily use or also okay for occasional weekly or monthly use long term? And uh, well, how long term are we talking about, Tom? Are we talking more than 50 years? Well, you know, we're, uh, uh, that's my goal. I've been taking them now for uh, uh, going on pretty close to not 10, 10, 11 years. I've been taking them and I'm going to continue taking them. And exactly. I, I, uh, I'll tell everyone, I personally credit um, the Sunhorse products as being a primary reason why I have a one-year-old son and I have a, a, a wonderful relationship with my wife and I have the energy. I just turned 70 a couple days ago. You look and, great. Well, well, thanks, Dan. But, you know, and pro a primary reason is because adaptogens, I... I express adaptogens as they are the conductor of the symphony. If these cells are a little low, they say, come on, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it. If these are a little high, calm down, calm down. And they're bringing balance. Dan, you've got this analogy that you've talked about before about music and about these herbs. Can, can you give people that, that analogy? And then from there, we're going into the immune system after that. Okay, um, and it's a, it's a very accurate analogy. And you mentioned it just a minute ago. And that is our body. Let's just think about it. Everything we put in our body has some kind of an effect for good or for bad. There's no doubt about it. That's just how it is. So when we're talk talking about the, these um, things like formulas, right? What they do, and this is one of the, and I, I kind of omitted this, when we mentioned the three characteristics, there is a fourth characteristic that I admitted, I admitted talking about. And that is the bi-directional or multi-directional fact, uh, the way they operate, their, their, their cause of action, like you just mentioned. Uh, adaptogens allow an overactive system 
to be able to be reduced or an underactive system or lethargic system to be able to be picked up. So imagine you go to a symphony and you're there and all the different sections there, you know, you have your, your, you have your, your, your violin and string sections, you have your horns, you know, you have the, the, you have percussion, you have all the different parts of a symphony and it's a big, big symphony. And they all know their parts. Everybody's an experienced musician. They all have the same, you know, symphony in front of them on their music stand. Can you imagine what it would sound like if they all tried to play the symphony and the conductor wasn't there? Do you think the experience for the, the hearers would be as good as if the conductor was actually there? And what does that little dude do anyway? Why is he there? He's not playing anything. Well, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's channeling all sound through his brain and he knows the piece. It's part of his DNA and he knows how it's supposed to sound. And he can bring one section down, bring one section up. He keeps time. That little movement that he's doing with his little stick in his hand is actually time signature. It's a time. So music is not just sound or, 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 or the actual frequency of the sound or amplitude or modulation, but it's the timing or the space between the sounds, okay? So you can play the notes on a piano, bong, 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 in a monotonous fashion. It could be the correct notes and a piano will play the same note, you just hit the key. But it's not gonna be music until you put timing into the music. Once you have timing and you can read the time signatures, a big deal, then the music comes alive. And then there's the expression of the person. The person himself has the ability to stroke the key or hit the key or hit the pedal or not hit the pedal. And that's what makes a beautiful sound in a maestro or a master versus a student. So when you're talking about injecting into our systems and, and, and taking into our systems a you are hiring nature's finest conductor. That's what you're doing. You're putting something into your system that that the creation of this planet has put these herbs there. This is there. Okay. This this is not an accident that these things are there. Animals know about them. People know about them. And people that avail themselves for from this for this class of herbs to be in their lives will 100% I guarantee you benefit. I am also I'm going to I'm going to jump on that for a yep. minute and, and let people know that if you've ever been to the symphony you know the sound when before the conductor comes out when they're hitting their their notes and they're trying to tune mm -hmm. everyone's going through it sounds like a mess you know it's chaos and they're beautiful notes, but it's chaos. So my experience in 40 years now of being a nutritional oriented physician has been that practically all of the herbal formulas I've seen is a bunch of players inside a capsule. And just like they're warming up. And because of Dan's mom and that he has spent 40 years, and I'm not, you know, I'm not just blowing smoke here, I'm telling you. These, uh, these products are a symphony and it's a beautiful symphony. And I, I was so shocked to see the results with my mother and we have seen results after results after results. It's dropped our jaw now for many years when we've seen things, dengue fever, uh, macular degeneration, diabetes. I mean, it's unbelievable the things that get better when you help the cells bring balance. And that's what these products do. Now, Dan, there's a couple of questions asking, how long before you see an improvement with energy from Thrivagen? Also, is it better to take throughout the day or in the morning only? Okay, uh, uh, you broke up a little bit on the beginning, but I heard the last part. So um, regarding taking our formulas, our liquid formulas that we just discussed, I always start the day taking my formulas in the morning, always. I don't miss a day. And That's the other cool. thing that I have to mention is I never finish the day without taking one or two pumps before I go to bed. And I have been so productive. My, my dreams 
productive. When I say productive, what I mean is over the years, I've noticed that when I take these adaptogens before I go to sleep, I sleep better, but I just dream like incredible dreams. I have like these flying dreams, which I just love, you know? I mean, I, I can dream that like, it's just like I'm flying, I swear to God. And, and, you know, everybody's had a flying dream, I think, you know, I mean, I don't know, maybe not, but they're, they're a blast because you're actually flying in your dream. You know, it's like, and I don't know what the propulsion is. I'm just able to do it. And that's just one thing. Sometimes I'll be working a formulation problem of which there's a lot of mathematics breaking large amounts of herbs down to just the right amount of milligrams to the formula so that it'll dose out correctly at the, at the individual level. And there's tons of math. And I'm not saying I'm a very good mathematician when it comes to just doing math without a calculator. But for whatever reason, I keep a, a notepad by my bed. I always do this because it's just right by the nightstand. Because in the middle of the night, many times I'll wake up and I'll be like, I got this number in my head. I'm like, what the heck am I doing here? Why did I wake up? And I'll go, well, okay, I got, you know, 116,473, whatever that means. I'm gonna write it down. Why did I, I don't know why, I, I just write it down. And so then I just go back to bed. But if I don't write it down, it kind of bothers me. And sometimes I forget it. But I've actually been able to do mathematics to like extreme small decimals in my sleep. And I'm terrible at it when I'm awake. I can't do that. So, so I don't know. I don't know why it works that way. But I will tell you that your body and your brain are doing things at night. And, you know, this is very important to do at night. I I fully agree. I Not fully a lot. Don't find 10 minutes. Just do one or two. So do a, a good amount in the morning. Noon, if I think about it, if I'm around, I will, I will take it during, like if I'm going to do something like a bike ride or I go for a hike or I'm going surfing or I might want to take the horse out or maybe I'm going, to, going on a, something with friends, whatever. I might take it in the middle of the day, but I don't necessarily have to. But morning and night, I never miss. All right. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for that. So we, we're going to move on now to the topic of the immune system and uh, the threat that's here uh, worldwide right now. And as we begin to get into that topic, I wanna to talk about two things first. The first thing, those of you that have heard me before, you're gonna hear it again, everyone must get their vitamin D tested. Don't assume that you have adequate levels because you take 5,000 units a day or 10,000 units a day, please get tested. Research has come out in the last six weeks that says if your vitamin D is above 50, 5-0, if your vitamin D is above 50, you may get sick with this virus, but the likelihood that you're going to die is close to zero. When your vitamin D is below 50, that's not the case. So we want to make sure your vitamin D is above 50. So go to your doctor, get your vitamin D tested. If that's a nuisance for you, we're going to put the link in here. Click the link, order the vitamin D test. You do a finger prick. That's all you have to do to find out your level, but get your vitamin D tested. The second test I want everyone to do is get yourself a pulse ox meter. A, a, you need to know what your pulse ox is. Dan's got one there. He's going to show you what it looks like. You can get them for $30, $40. I mean, they go as high as a few thousand dollars, but you can get an expensive, an inexpensive one that'll work just fine. Dan, do you have one there? Uh, I'm trying to get it to work. Let me see if it's working here. Okay, I found mine. So this is, this is a pulse ox meter and I'm going to turn it on. And then I just put my finger in here and it's going to tell me what my pulse rate is. And it's going to tell me the percentage of oxygen that's in there. So my pulse ox is at 97 and my pulse rate 
is at 61. So that's not bad on both counts, but the pulse ox, the percentage of oxygen, and this one cost me $35 on Amazon. That's good. The, the, the percentage of oxygen in your blood is critically important to save your life. Oh yeah. That if you contract this virus, the way that it's killing people is in their lungs. For the vast majority of them, they can't breathe. And there's an, and so we're gonna talk for a couple of minutes about why they can't breathe. 97 and, and 63. Well, that's good, Dan. I'm at 97 and 61. So that's, we're- that's, I was just trying to figure out how to get this thing to kick on here, but yeah. yeah. So we're, yeah. we're doing okay here. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, we're doing okay. So, so everyone, please, please, please test your vitamin D and get a pulse ox and you, you check your pulse ox every day. Oh yeah. Uh, it's, it's critically important. So I'm going to show you, cause, and then we're gonna talk about a product, but I'm going to share my screen. And can you make sure I can share screen, please? <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen because a few years ago, now we have a product at Sunhorse that is called Cardio Tone. And uh, a few years ago, when I was at Swiss Mountain Clinic, they took a drop of my blood and put it under the microscope and we could see it on the screen, on, on a television screen. And what, I, um, what uh, the television screen showed me was, um, let's see if I can pull it up here. There we go. Can everyone, Dan, can, can, can you see the screen here? I can see it, Tom. Yeah. This was my blood. Now these are red blood cells and they're supposed to be individual. This is called a poker chip or a money chip formation. You know, like poker chips all stacked on each other. This is a very serious threat for a clot. And if you get a clot, that means a stroke or a heart attack. When I saw this come up on the screen, I looked at the person, I said, did you switch the slides? And they looked at me and they were pretty startled. They said, no doctor, uh, this is not good. Uh, and I said, I know this is not good. And uh, uh, I, I was startled, but I happened to have the proto prototype with me of our product CardioTone. So I went back to my room that, uh, and I took four of them and the next morning I went to um, uh, uh, have this done again. And I asked them to uh, uh, please, uh, let's do this again. And they said, oh, doctor, it won't change that quickly. There's no medication. We just have to make sure, you know, you're drinking a lot of water. You're not eating a lot of fats. I said, I understand, I understand, but let's just do it again, please. And here is the picture that came the next day uh, when we did the, the thing again. So this is my blood the next day uh, after taking Cardiotone. So what we know is that Cardiotone helps the red blood cells, it prevents the stickiness, the stickiness of the red blood cells. And this is my blood. I saw this myself, startled the heck out of me. That, I, I, remember, I remember when you requested more of the department. I remember that's been a few years. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So what we want to talk to you about, first, you, you monitor your pulse ox every day, get an inexpensive little monitor and do it. And then you want to have some products available in case you need them. Now, we have a, uh, a uh, person at Sunhorse who just got hit with this virus, surprisingly, because she's extremely healthy. Uh, Dan, can you just talk about the numbers of what happened for her? Well, I definitely will. Um, I was a little concerned about Mona going to Arizona to visit her family, which she has not been able to do since the pandemic uh, you know, started. You know, so it's been two years, really, that she hasn't been able to, to really see her family. And so, um, 
she went back. I stayed because I have a heavy workload and I just couldn't go this year. I, I love going back there, but you know, Flagstaff at Arizona is so beautiful and the snow and all, but I couldn't go. Anyway, so Mona goes back there and her mother is a doctor. So she's, you know, she's in good, in, I figure in good hands, no matter what, you know, so I felt a little, I felt okay that she was going back there. Her mom's a doc, mom's there, dad's there, brother, bro Brother's there now. Brother's younger than Mona and quite a social guy. He gets he gets a lot a lot of social activity. Dan, and Dan, so, uh, Dan, excuse me. I've just got to say we've only got five minutes okay. left and we have two products to talk about. Long and short, she she contracts the Omicron variant of the coronavirus, and she said it hit her like a ton of bricks. It hit her straight on, and her pulse ox that we just did the pulse ox here for both of us it was down to 88 yeah, when, when she tested that was very low by the way for your listeners if your pulse ox gets to number it's time to go to the hospital okay 88 is really bad you don't wait and you don't want to get it in the in the high 80s or low mid 80s or i mean mid 80s if it gets to low 80s you're dead so 88 is very bad because what happens, it can, it can drop precipitously. When you go to sleep, it can drop another 10% just by sleeping. Your, your oxygenation levels will go down normally. So imagine another eight points. So now it would be down to 80. So she couldn't go to sleep and she started slamming the, um, the cardio tone, which she just were talking for yourself. But she also used the lung support. So we have cardio tone and lung support. These are the things she had with her, which I made her take with her as a kind of a, a first aid kit of herbs, amongst other things. So she had the cardio tone and the lung support. Now, what happens is that your blood becomes sticky, just like your blood looked. You know, it starts to stick together. And then the, the oxygen exchange does not take place in the lungs. That, that critical gas exchange ceases and you are in big trouble. That's a very, very common thing. Doctors are even recommending blood thinners, but they use these powerful pharmaceutical grade blood thinners like warfarin or Coumadin. And they, those things have, they come with high risk because you can overdo it and you can bleed out or it, the, the dosage is so critical. They're very, very powerful. But these, these two formulas, the cardiotone is a proteolytic, which means it dissolves protein like fibrin, which is what clots are made of fibrin amongst other things. It dissolves that in a thrombolytic. A thrombolytic means it dissolves the thrombi. And that picture of your blood with dark field microscopy was actually the beginning of a thrombot. And, and that's also known as thrombosis. You can get that in your legs and you can, you, it can get loose, go to your brain, you have a stroke, goes to your heart, you have a pulmonary, you have a, a cardiac arrest, goes to your lungs, you have a pulmonary embolism. These System start to attack your red blood cells, and that's giving an inflammatory uh, effect to your blood. Okay, so the lung support, in addition to the cardio, the lung support, it is using an herb that saved my life years ago. This is really why I'm still here, is because it uses Makania Huaco amongst other herbs like Osha and Cordyceps sinensis. And this is an amazing thing. This, this I put together to help athletes, people training at high altitudes where hypoxia starts to happen because of the high altitude. And like you go to Colorado and you start going up into the, into the big 12 and 14,000 foot uh, range, you can really start suffering from altitude sickness above 12,000 feet. And so I sent this with climbers that were going, trekking in the, in the Andes and going to Alaska to do Denali. And I mean, I've sent this with people all over the place. We have a swimming team that was able to cut like an, a ridiculous amount of time off of all their strokes. And they were training in Colorado at high altitude. They were using the lung support and they were able to cut 
multiple seconds off of their swim times in their laps, which is like the equivalent of six months of training just by taking the lung support. So for people that are having to be exposed to COVID, it's not a vaccine. It's not going to keep you from getting it. But if you do get it, you use these two things here. And Mona, she took them both. She took like three each, that's six, three lung support, three cardio tone. And then she, a few hours later, she took another three each, that's another six, okay? And her oxygen and her mother was ready to take her to the hospital like now, but she says, we're watching on the pulse ox. And within just a matter of a couple hours, her oxygenation went from 88 and dropping to 97. And she never went to the hospital. She went, got through the 24 hours of misery that COVID represented. And another day of pretty bad misery, she got tested. She had Omicron COVID. She had it. She was positive. She stayed yeah. back there. To, and so these things saved her bacon, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And I recommend uh, I'm, them highly. I'm, uh, I'm going to say that we're, we're going to go over by five or 10 minutes here because there's a ton of questions and there's some really important questions. So I'm going to the questions now. Dan, the first question, because of prostate cancer, my husband cannot have testosterone. Can he use this product? Yes, because it's not giving you testosterone. Right. What it, all it does is balance your system. So you have to remember that a system in balance is not like, you're not like giving something, there's no testosterone in any of these right. formulas. Right. Okay. Yeah. All it's gonna do is balance your system. And it's been proven many, many times that adaptogens, just because your testosterone, if it was in a, if your body needs more free testosterone, it's not a matter of getting more testosterone. It's a matter of not converting what testosterone you have into dihydrotestosterone. It's a matter of the conversion. And those elements are basically genetic or epigenetic. So some people get bald. They have this pattern baldness. And if you test those people, they have a high dihydrotestosterone level. And it's actually creating a situation where their hair falls out. Where free testosterone, the same amount of testosterone, but in the free form, your hair does not fall out. Right. But it's what it's the holy grail of testosterone. You want free testosterone, not dihydrotestosterone. So when you're to answer that question, this is not going to elevate artificially any testosterone levels, but it will cause a better utilization of the available testosterone. Agree, agree. Uh, I'll I'll take this question from Lucia. My vitamin D is too high at 85. Is this a problem? No, Lucia, it's not. The research says between 50 and 100 is where you want to be. So if you're at 85, you're perfect. It is not too high. And that goes against what the laboratory says. But as you read the science, it's very, very clear on that. Dan, the next question, are there any conditions where it would be unsafe to take adaptogens? I'm thinking specifically of my mother who has a great deal of scar tissue on her lungs. You know. Tom, um, I always tell people that less is more. First of all, adaptogens, one of their, the main def definitive requirements of an adaptogen that it's non-toxic. So, but that doesn't mean that it's, these are not powerful formulas. So what you wanna do with somebody is you wanna start them with a very small amount. So like, for example, if you take the, um, let's just say the ultimate energy, it says shake well, six to 12 pumps per day. That's for the whole day. So somebody like, you know, this person's mother who may be an older person and has never experienced the, what this stuff can do, I would say two pumps and that's it for a day. And the next day, another two pumps. Do that a couple of days and allow the body the chance to, to experience the resonance, to experience the, the power of this formula. Little by little, the you will notice that your mother will want more. <laughs> she will say, you know what? I think I want more. I want three or four pumps. Okay, fine. And by the way, six to 12 pumps, that's not a maximum that you could take. Literally, you could take a big old chug of this stuff. It's not going to hurt you. It's non-toxic. But don't do more for the sake of more. 
More yeah. is not always good. It's just simply more. So do what you need and start low and titrate. This is a titration pump. So titrate just one or two pumps difference each day and find your happy spot. Sometimes it's four pumps. Sometimes it's 12 pumps. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is for you, and it can change with the stresses that you're under. We're all under stress, Tom. This, this, this world we live in right now, especially with the pandemic, is putting a, a massive amount of stress on all of us. And you know, most doctor visits, and you can attest to this, not about 70 to 80% of all doctor visits are attributable to overstress, period. That's just a fact. Yeah. And adaptogens are the answer to overstress. Agreed, agreed. Um, let's see, uh, Nancy says, can I take Thrivagen if I take bioidentical hormones? And the answer is yes, Nancy. Yes, you can. Th Thrivagen is not a hormone. It's not going to increase your hormones. It's going to balance your hormones. And, and you may notice as your system starts functioning better, you may require less of the bioidentical hormone. So just thank you for saying that, Tom. That's yeah. exactly what she's going to discover. Um, so we have a, an associate in Texas who is noticing that with his people right now, that they're taking less hormones because the adaptogens are working on their system and they're actually requiring on average 50% less hormone. Yes, yes. Uh, Liz is asking, would this herb adaptogens be okay for someone with systemic candida from living in mold for years? Okay. Candida exists in all of us, first of all. It's, it's, it's endemic to everybody. The problem is not the candida. The problem is the candida overgrowth. Yeah. And that's the problem. So too much candida. So I will tell you that the candida is, it kind of bites into the, to the intestinal lining of the GI tract and all throughout the system. It actually becomes part of the epithelial layer. It, it's subsurface. It actually grabs on. It does not go away very easily. You have to literally use something that the candida cannot escape. And my recommendation is diatomaceous earth. It is like, and don't overdo it because you will have a candida die off like you've never seen, but you well, take- Well, we have to say here that we can't give recommendations. We're not your doctor. And That's so, true. We, so we can't tell you what to take, but in terms of taking the adaptogenic herbs, there is no problem taking the adaptogenic herbs. What they'll do is help bring up your immune system and bring more balance into your system. Sorry, Dan, but we we can't give those specifics. No, no it's okay. Yeah, no, don't don't give specifics. But they they heard the word, so just do your own research on that because you'll find that many people have 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 done that research and they can reach their own uh you know their own uh, decisions. Our health our health choices are our own to make. But look into that if you want to. And yes, adaptogens once again will help. They will help the overall effect, you know, to balance this out. Annie asked the question, will this be okay to take with prescription medications with no worries? I will say this, after 15 years of working with these formulas, and I will tell you that the vast number of Americans that have taken these formulas are on some form of prescription medication. And we have never had really any problem whatsoever, except one notable exception was there was a fellow up in San Francisco who was right. taking heart medication. He was taking, I believe it was Coumadin. It was a blood thinner. It I was believe. Coumadin. And it was Coumadin from what I remember. And he yep. started taking Mojo. And then after a short time, he went to the doctor. He was feeling great. He went to the doctor. The doctor, have, they have to monitor these levels of heart, heart blood thinners because they are very dangerous if they're not carefully controlled amounts. And so the doctor did a blood test and checked his Coumadin levels and they were at zero. He had no Coumadin right. in his system. Right. So the doctor was shocked. But the guy felt great. He didn't have any. He didn't have any complaints. But the doctor was mortified because the Coumadin wasn't even there. And so what happened is that the adaptogens had 
put his system into a situation where it was doing great and it recognized the Coumadin as a toxin and eliminated the Coumadin from his system quickly. Of course, the guy felt wonderful, but he had no Coumadin in his system. Now, the question is, what was his platelet aggregation quotient? They didn't check that to my knowledge. And I will tell you that in many cases, you are off blood thinners. You won't have to go back on, but you need to monitor that very carefully with your doctor, but understand that adaptogens can, can elicit this cleanup. It's like house cleaning through your body. And if it runs into something like Coumadin, which it did in this case, it said bye-bye Coumadin and got rid of it. So whenever you're taking prescription medications that are extremely important that the levels stay for your own safety, stay a certain level, I recommend that you keep the monitoring going, but understand that I have never heard of anybody being harmed by taking adaptogens with or without their prescription medications, but stay with the monitoring for sure. And I, I will add to that answer if you understand that taking adaptogens bring up the sluggish part of your system and calm down the anxious part of your system to bring balance, your need for medication is going to change. So you it have to be working with your doctor who prescribed the medication to be checked regularly for a couple of months because you're not gonna need as much thyroid medication or heart medication, you, you, or blood pressure medication. You start getting dizzy, well, it likely is because you don't need that high blood pressure medication anymore that you're taking, and you're getting dizzy when you stand because your blood pressure is normal now, but you're taking this medication that's lowering it too low. So you just have to monitor, uh, uh, but we neither of us have heard of a complaint in terms of uh, any dangers with adaptogens. Here's a whole book, Tom, only one book, but there's many books. There's a whole book on adaptogens here. I'm going to read right off the back of this book on adaptogens. You can see that right there. There's okay. a whole, whole book of nothing but adaptogens here. Okay, so we all deal with stress every day of our lives, right? It's talking about this. This provides a comprehensive look into adaptogens. The non-toxic herbs such as ginseng, eleuthero, lute, and, and, and licorice, which pr produce a defensive response to stress in our bodies. So these rejuvenating herbs and tonics help the body to adapt to the many influences it encounters. They increase stamina and counter the effects of aging and thus are becoming important tools in sports medicine and in the prevention and treatment of chronic fatigue and many other stress-related disorders. And it goes on and on and on. That's, a, that's an excellent place to pause. We've gone over by uh, 14 minutes. I apologize, everyone, but this is just too good information. Uh, Dan's going to be coming back regularly to talk about adaptogens and we'll let you know we'll announce that when it's going to happen there are some links here our recommendation is that you give this a if if you're interested you give it a two-month trial okay. don't, don't expect to feel results in a couple of days or a week now many people do pretty quickly feel great results, but it really takes a month to two months to give it a fair shot, depending on where your system is right now. I fully endorse the use of Sunhorse Energy products. Um, they've saved my mother. Uh, uh, they have kept me going at a, at a pace that I'm very grateful for. And I recommend everyone give them a try and just see what happens in the next 30 to 60 days. With that, I'm gonna say, Dan, thanks so much for being here. It's great, it's great to do this. We'll look forward to seeing you again here real soon. Thank you so much, Tom. And thank you to all your listeners uh, for their patience and understanding. And I, I'm really happy that I had a chance to, to speak to them. So we'll sign out for now. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. All right, everyone, see you soon. Bye-bye.